So the first question comes from Nicole. Uh, she states, do you think that Coach is right when he says that no matter what we do, America will always suffer from racism because the fact that we see each other as anything other than human is racist. The next question comes from Liz, who states, are those who consider themselves white doomed to be racist because they consider themselves white? How can we as a society move on from the hierarchical groups of race that are historically built on a foundation of racism and discrimination? What can we do to be better? And then we have Luke, uh, who basically states, what is one thing society can do to, in, to enact real change? Uh, Luke speaks about how Mr. Colt paints a picture of the you know, atrocity and wrongs that have been done to a lot of Black Americans and how we, as, or, or how society can, um, can instill a, a terrible picture for those growing up black, for those who have to grow, experience growing up black. And so Luke is asking, how can this picture be changed? How can we change the narrative and the circumstance? And then how do we as a society get better? And then we have Kim, uh, who she didn't ask a question, but she came out with two insights. She said, if you love this country, you must respect every human as an individual, including those that walked in the past and those that were enslaved. If this country is to live up to its great promise, it must be held to an exceptional moral standard and make sure our laws and policies reflect that standard. That means we cannot accept a police state where unarmed people are being executed and children are segregated in subpar schools and living in violent places. So uh, Kim is basically talking about what, you know, our forefather, or not our forefather, but one of our great presidents, Abraham Lincoln, stated in that, um, you know, what is it, the uh, indelible rights that we all deserve. If the country is to live up to that great promise, there are certain things that must happen. And then finally, with me, I state that Mr. Coates' perspective on racism looks to explore deeper than surface level effects. Uh, on page seven, there's a quote where he states, but race is the child of racism, not the father. And then on page 111, he states, the killing fields of Chicago, of Baltimore, of Detroit, were created by the policy of dreamers. But their weight, their shame, rests solely upon those who are dying in them. There is a great deception in this. To yell black on black crime is to shoot a man and then shame him for bleeding. Um, so basically, Mr. Quotes is uh, Mr. Coates here in both quotes is uh, displaying that racism is not a, just a surface level experience. Uh, whether you you want to debate it's a systemic thing or uh, it's of another nature, Mr. Coates uh, in these quotes and in the whole work explores the background of race. And he finds it to be, uh, you know, very insulting to just state that black on black crime is something uh, that can be explained away very easily. And it's not a deep rooted problem.